The Modern Jeeper Show, the show about Jeeps, Jeeping, and Jeepers. Hey, Modern Jeepers. Matt's for Medical Care, and it's another episode of the Modern Jeeper Show. And we have Mr. Modern Jeeper, Corey Osborne. And, and I, I'm hesitating because it's been so long since I've like been able to introduce you guys. How you doing, Corey? It's, uh, it's been a little bit. Yeah, we're doing good. We're alive. Good, good. And Rock Steel Jeep Girl, Jesse. What's going on? You know, it, there was a point in time in our in our history where like no matter what was happening we'd do a show lately you guys are doing so much that it's like doing a show is a um is a challenge it's a, it's, it's a challenge to stop someplace and be someplace where you can do a show even now where are you guys driving in the middle of where are you at right now we are actually in the middle of kansas um heading back from being on the east coast for about three weeks or so and we're actually headed uh, tomorrow morning will be set up in Colorado at the All for Fun event in Empire. And and you're exactly right. I mean, we've had a few folks reaching out going, hey, hope everybody's okay and hope things are all right. And we're alive. And, uh, yep, we're alive and and uh, we'll get caught back up here one of these days. But you're, you're right. Our schedules lately and even your schedule and, and us with we, we've put about 18,000 miles on the truck in four and a half months. That's all events. So yeah, it's been a little crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's you, how many, how many CTIs you think you've done in that four and a half months? Oh, uh, it's gotta be over three fifty something like that. Oh, um, you know, and I will, so this, this last tour, you know, the last time we did a podcast, we were actually, we had just gotten back. We did a recap of the Artemis rally. And then, right. uh, of course, I had surgery. This is this is the first time uh, anybody's actually seen, uh, you know, I'm, I'm healing. Yeah. I don't know how clear that is. But uh, it's getting better. The big hole in my forehead. Um, but this last trip. We were headed out to New Jersey Jeep Invasion out in Wildwood, New Jersey. Stop by a shout out to, again, all of our, our jobbers this year who have, you know, kind of been there to support us as we've come through and either stopped at a CTI event um, or, or just stopped by to say hi. OCD, Bull Run 4x4, uh, Globex, Mount Zion Off Road, Slinging Mud, Slinging Mud, all these guys that, that, do what what shops do right they're they're working hard in the middle of this giant heat wave um the the folks at blinker fluid productions that put on the new jersey jeep invasion what a what a great event that is you know all these events have kind of struggled uh, in the past couple of years because of coming out of covid and, and things like that and uh i think that uh everybody's kind of getting back on their feet well that's how was the attendance like i, mean, I saw some of the aerial the vintage, vintage of the new jersey jeep and bays and it seemed seemed to be well packed yeah you know the the jeep invasion itself was extremely busy and excuse me but i'm going to make some quick uh, adjustments as we lost our our camera here yeah i can see um, i got a nice picture of you from we had been 10 years ago you know, hat, no facial hair. You'd have, you need to update your profile picker. I can see you guys now, though. Well, oh, you can see us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at Jesse right now. There you go. Frozen on the screen. All right. Nice. Well, as long as you can, you can see us and hear us. Yeah. We're good. We can always. So next time that happens, we'll just superimpose a picture of you with your hole in your forehead. Um, <laughs> while while you, you if go. I can still hear you, but then everybody will have that vision of just this big giant hole in your head. Oh. <laughs> so how, well, that, been, by uh, the way, just to kind of wrap that up, because I did let our, our our fans know that it was a bit of a struggle. Like, is that 
feeling good? Is it fine? Is it healed? You still get headaches or, or what's or it's it's numb between my eyes is a little numb. Um, and I think that's just scar tissue and whatnot trying to heal mm. uh, the actual incision and stuff. It's kind of weird. I still can't do the surprised face because um, <laughs> if I if I raise my eyebrows, it kind of still pulls all that stuff on my forehead. So, wow. So do you have, can you do the furrowed brow, you know, kind of the angry furrowed brow? Hey, or, you just, or do you have, so. you have just kind it's, of this placid look now. <laughs> Nobody knows. Is he angry? Is he surprised? What, what, what's this be that, that plastic, you know, um, what is it? The stuff that people inject in their faces, Jesse? Botox. Yeah, the Botox. Got yeah. Free Botox. <laughs> yeah, I got free Botox. Yeah, I got free Botox. Got a chunk For... of skin missing from his body. So. Wow. Yeah. No good. Well, good. I'm glad they're through that. So, okay. So you did. You hit it out. You did New Jersey Jeep invasion. Well, let's see. I mean, let's. Armist rally happens. You do that. Um, then. I'm, I'm, I'm even lost in like your track of time. Did you guys go back home after Artemis or did you stay? Yeah. Yep. So you went back home went after back Artemis. Home and that's when I had surgery. Okay, well, that's right. We did stop at shops on the way back, didn't we? I'm, True. It's been too many days. Man, I don't know. Too many sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> So and then then you uh, then you went back out, did yes. uh, New Jersey Jeep Invasion. Was that the was that the first event? Or was there another event before that? Uh, no, we were just working our way through shops on the way out. To right, New Jersey. right. So we did a couple of CTI stops on the way out there, and then made a couple of stops. Of course, that was you know Fourth of July weekend, and and everybody right. was out uh, doing things with their families, and and you know off-roading like they should be right what'd you guys do on fourth of july uh we were at home actually we didn't oh. do anything because i had surgery the next day that's yeah. right that's right that's right yeah i'm just trying to keep track of it yeah i can't keep track of any of this stuff it's hard enough keeping track of if, if everybody could see my my board over here where i'm trying to keep track of all the events keep track of the people we're at the point now where there's other there's another board in the sales team area where they're keeping track of like where their schedules are and how they're where, what event they're supposed to go to who's taking time off and trying to coordinate all that. Cause we get, end up having to do one of these moments. Wait a second. Wait, 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 you're going to an event, you're taking a time off and you've got a half day. There's not going to be in the office. What's going on? I'm going to have, I'm going to have to answer the phones. I don't want to do that anymore. Right. It's so much more fun to just fly into an event. Right. <laughs> Especially so you did you that. Your, yeah. So New Jersey Jeep Invasion. Then you made your way up and uh, saw our buddy Mike at Mount Zion. Yes. And what, you know, again, what a, an amazing shop. And uh, Mike and his guys are, are always so helpful for us. And it was good to see them because we've, we've skipped that area because typically this time of year, we're all, all of us are in Oregon. Right, right, yeah. You used, you used to do the Tillamook event. We used to. Remember back in the day when we did the Tillamook Modern Jeep Adventure? Back in the back day. In the yeah, yeah. Running the sand dunes. Remember those days? Yeah, yeah. But it was kind of crazy because, you know, guys, listen, Corey would be on the East Coast and then drive all the way out to get to um, to get to New Tillamook, to then turn around and go buy all the way back out to go to another event, all for fun. Actually, probably, most likely. Um, that was a lot of back and forth. Yes, yes. And so this year has definitely been a, a refocus kind of year. You know, we've, we've spent a lot of time um, building relationships with all of our installers, all of our customers. You know, and I, and I want to talk a little bit about that, too, because our, our customers, of course, are what keep us uh, coming out to events and, and helping them out. And um, yeah, I saw some comments even in our, our Metal Cloak Owners Forum. Uh, and, and on the Metal Cloak Owners Club Facebook page, of guys really wanting to get some more ideas about how to get more flex out of their Jeeps and whatnot. And I just, I, I hope that people don't get frustrated when we do have a big line. Um, it's hard for us to spend 
better than, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes with someone. And then if I find out later that they do want more help, you guys can reach out to any of us, even the sales guys at Metal Cloak. Um, you know, I think one gentleman, he was looking for some more flex. And I mentioned that uh, if he went to a, one of our flares or an aftermarket fender, that he'd probably get some more. And that also involved removing bump stops and things like that. And I think he just wanted more. He wanted, he wanted more. And, and uh, you know, our, our owner's club guys are very supportive. And I think a lot of people were, were commenting. Uh, there's a lot of things that come into play when we see a Jeep on the trailer. And we have a few minutes to look at it. We're looking at shocks and, and springs and, and control arms and all of it. Fenders, drive shafts, so much stuff. So, um yeah, if, if anybody ever leaves an event and they still have more questions, please, please, please reach out to any of the three of us or call one of the sales guys at Metal Club. We'll be happy to help. Absolutely. You know, our suspension experts here are flex experts. The flex experts. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, our, flex, our, our, flex experts. It's just flex, flex experts. The Metal Club flex experts. Okay, that, flex that officially is trademarked. Flex experts. We're trademarking that. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. <laughs> Flexperts. Flexperts. <laughs> okay, guys, you officially are flexperts now. Uh, that's great. The cor- <laughs> the, 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 the corner travel index flexperts trailer. <laughs> you go. I like it. I like it. Oh, I got to get you a t shirts now that say flexperts. Consult your local flexperts. Flexperts. We are your flexperts. Flexperts do it with coils. <laughs> Flexperts do it with I think we've seen more XJs in the last two weeks than all the years. I think everybody just went out, traded their light bars in for for XJs. I really think so. Uh, Get rid of their $1,200 light bar for a $500 XJ. Well, and and that's interesting because XJs have definitely been had to come back. We actually, you know, we released the XJ um, gas tank skid. Because it was, yes, thanks, so, yeah, it's 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 kind of thing on the comeback. You know, we still have that XJ body armor design. We have the XJ long arm kit design. There's been some discussion about releasing just the that front of the kit, like not producing a full kit with um with leaf springs and everything, but just releasing the front long arm uh, belly pan with the arms themselves and that whole setup, just so people have an opportunity to kind of build their own and choose whatever coil uh, leafs they want. We just don't want to carry leaves and manufacture leaves or carry leaves or you know they take a lot of they can take a lot of shelf space or ship leaves yeah ship yeah yeah that too. shipping leaf springs is no fun right so well okay so you guys are doing it on the way back doing for all for fun which is kind of cool there somebody reached out to me yesterday and just said hey you're gonna be at all for fun like yeah absolutely we'll be out there um and that's so it's cool because it's an event you've been going to for how many years now Wow, a long time. I mean, All for Fun and the Mile High Jeep Club have been putting this event together for almost as long as Easter Jeep Safari. And, um, you know, again, things we've talked about this in the past, uh, events evolve, clubs evolve, uh, the industry evolves. And uh, some new folks took over the event a couple of years ago. And um, I think that they've had some challenges, but... You know, they've been really good about reaching back out to us, and they understand that um, we, we will give folks at the event something to do on vendor day. So, um, you know, I, we kind of were hesitant about driving all the way back across from Pennsylvania uh, to go to an event where we may run the trailer for four or five hours. Um, that's a lot to ask, but it's, it's a commitment that we, we don't mind making when we know it's for a good cause and we're, we're all about trying to get out there and help as many people as we can. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's never a dull moment. I was, I was just thinking about yesterday and, uh, we started our day off in, uh, Pennsylvania and we hadn't traveled, but for, I don't know, a little bit, an hour or something. And, uh, I look across this divided, highway that we're on 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 the interstate uh, i think we were on 81 no actually we were on 70 already yeah we we're on interstate 70 and i look across the other lane 
and coming at me from the other direction on the other side of this divided highway is a Ford Explorer uh, end over end, up in the air, pirouettes, eight to 10 feet in the air, flips a couple of times and lands facing the other direction, almost back in on our side of the highway. Um, and I, I gotta tell our listeners that Number one, nobody was hurt, but there were two babies in the back of this Ford Explorer, both in car seats, and neither of those kids, one of the kids, he was probably two, had bit his lip, so he had a little bit of a a bloody lip. That was the only marks on either of those two kids in the back of that Explorer. Uh, Grandma was driving. She didn't really remember what had happened, but... We pulled over immediately, and some other guys on the other side uh, ran down. Jesse called 911 and got her out of the car and got the babies out of the Explorer. And, um, you know, it's one of those instances that things can happen so fast, and you don't have a whole lot of time to, to think about it. But, um, boy, these things right here, these little straps that we wear in the cars and having kids in your car seat, they all three walked away from that, and that Explorer was toast. The engine was, she ripped the steering wheel off the dash, like the steering wheel's down passenger forward. Oh, wow. So, again, the impacts were amazing. The side curtains were all all inflated, um, which were, I was impressed. I mean, I we had to basically cut the seat belts apart to get the uh, car seats out and cut her seatbelt off to get her out of the car. But, um, yeah. Hey, guys, wear your seatbelts. Put those kids, no matter how far away you're going, in that car seat. Yes. Wow. That is, that's intense. And, you know, and it's, it is, I'll, I'll say this, and maybe not all parents have this experience, but it is pretty frustrating sometimes when you argue with your kids about buckling in. Like my daughter, Vivian, hates it, hates buckling in, right? And yet every time it's like, buckle in, buckle in. We can't go anyplace until you buckle in. Or halfway while we're driving, all of a sudden one of the other kids will say, Vivian's unbuckled. You're like, it only takes a second. It only takes a second for something to happen and to be like devastated the rest of your life because they weren't buckled in properly. The seat wasn't put in properly. And that's another part too. It doesn't even matter how well buckled in. If your seat isn't installed properly, and those car seats must have been installed very well, because they otherwise I, they can go left, right, upwards, downwards. I mean, there's there's so many things that could have gone wrong there. Yes. Yeah, it was um, it was pretty incredible, and and um, it's really hard when something like that happens, and you don't know what to expect. All the windows were busted, so we really couldn't see in the car. Uh, the, like I said, the engine was pretty much, you know, up, up into the firewell and, and, um, yeah, again, it was, the thing was just mangled and to look in the, the compartment of the driver's door and see that everybody in there was very well contained and safe. And it was because they were all wearing their seatbelts. Um, wow. It could have so know, much been the, the lady who had some chest pains and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, first off, bravo to you two for stepping up as first responders and helping out. I'm sure there's a lot of people who just drive by, even something like that. In that situation. And, and um, yeah, there's some really good people on the road. And again, and, and there's some other people that literally there are car parts all over our side of the road. And some people weren't even stopping. They were just driving through. I mean, there's springs and balances and plastic parts and lights scattered all over the highway. And some people are just driving right through it. And you truck know, drivers with their pictures. phones out the window trying to get a video. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need to do better. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, people, do better, people. Do, do better. better. That's right. Do better, be better. Uh, so, okay, so you're heading back for all for one. So, they, all right, so that's kind of been a recap of where you're going, what you're doing, but what the hell else has been going on in the world of Jeeps? <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, 
man, I don't know. I heard there's some some really cool stuff coming down the pipe in in, in Metal Cloak's land. I heard that uh, there's some cool colors coming out for uh, again this year for 2024 stuff, and that some weren't going to be released until maybe third or fourth quarter. Fairly fairly quiet. People I think are out trying to stay cool and then maybe go to an event, go to go camping, go to an off road. You get you get the Rubicon of big events coming up over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. This well this week Jeepers Jamboree. Next week uh Jeep Jamboree, the um the smaller the three day event, which is actually kid friendly. Jeepers Jamboree, of course, for everybody knows, is the is the partying event. And we last week's replay episode was Bob Sweeney, um, of president of Jeepers Jamboree. So interesting insight when you're listening to that episode on just what it takes to get 800 rigs or a thousand rigs or whatever through the Rubicon in a couple of days. I mean, it's just and if you've been, I mean, we've all wheeled the Rubicon when it was just a dozen of us and some other people going and doing it, and that takes all day if it's not coordinated properly but for them to get like on the first day thursday 400 rigs 500 rigs t- through from morning to in, in time for dinner that's crazy it, it's incredible crazy. it's incredible and the fact that they're doing it and i will say this bob knows everything that's going on on that trail at all times and i'll say that i say that because that other guy that you used to work for. Um, I remember going to him out of the Rubicon trip. It was dinner time or whatever. And I asked a question about who, where were people and go, oh, I have no idea. Like he had no interest in the status of his volunteers or of the attendees coming through that trip. Yeah, that's too bad. And, and guys, it makes a difference. I mean, it makes a difference who it you does choose make to go do a trip with. You know, um, it, it, so if you if you have on your bucket list the Rubicon, and you have an opportunity to do a big trip, do it with Jeepers Jamboree, or Jeep Jamboree, the smaller event. If you have kids, don't choose that other one because it really one. Let's put it this way: one is a great adventure with some awesome people. The other is you're just paying for a trip from a corporate group that has profitability in mind, nothing else. Oh. At some point, we may uh, bring that trip back, depending on our schedule down the road. Who, who knows? I, I know that uh, we have a, a very dear friend of ours, Alex Gomez, and, and he um, was out at our, our Death Valley trip this year, and he created an amazing video. It hasn't been released yet, but um, look forward to seeing that when it's all finished and, and when it comes out, and hopefully our our followers will, will take a look at it as well, wherever we end up, wherever that video ends up landing for us. Um, but yeah, you know, going out on adventures with people that you trust, that's really what's most important. Yes, that is true. Um, and people you trust, people you want to have fun with. And let's face it, Jeepers Jamboree is a party. It's a fun time. It's lots of swimming, lots of dancing, lots of music, lots of big <laughs> fires, uh, movies. Metal Cloak does movies on Thursday night there and Friday night for the small trip. We uh, we sponsor movie night out there. Um, lots of drinking. There's a big bar. That's the first. That's the first trip. Second trip, family friendly, kids programs, kids things, RC cars, that all fun stuff. Still a great, more relaxing trip. In fact, it's kind of more fun to do that second trip for guys like me who don't party as much as I used to, um, just because it's relaxing. You go out of there, hang out with some people, say hi to some cool people, and and sleep by the water in your hammock. Yeah, there and, you go. And there's there's nothing better than that. You know, we did pick up kind of a cool thing, which kind of goes hand in hand with that whole overlanding thing while we were out in New Jersey. Yeah. We happened to be very close to our friends uh, out at Go Mammoth and got to see Johan and, and Maria. Um Maria. Marcia. Marcia, sorry. Um, but uh, ended up picking up a, a new tent for Jesse's rig since the one on the Gladiator is, well, that's mine. Um, <laughs> there is that. So she turns out she wanted to sleep separately um, from me when we go places. So now she can uh, 
do that with with recently released. This is a brand new tent from Bill Mamet called the Bunker, and um, it's really cool. It's it's built extremely well. Um, it aluminum. Fits. It's extremely it, it well. It fits on the, rack. the adventure rack system stuff perfectly. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. Nice. How much does it weigh? It's about 160 pounds, I believe. Um, we actually that we did a little install video while we had Will um, out in New Jersey with us of taking it out of the box and, and throwing it up on her Jeep. Literally taking it out of the box, putting it on her Jeep and tightening down four bolts on the adventure rack system. It took us, I don't know, 20 minutes. Yeah. It was Total easy. done. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Super fast, super. I mean, it's, it's a sturdy, sturdy tent, so it needed a very sturdy rack. And, uh, well, we know that company, so. I know somebody over there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which, is, which has been fun. Adventure Rack Systems has been, you know, we haven't done a lot. We did just release a TJ product, though. Um, yes. Did you see that? Yeah, so and there was some modification of working at LJ. It's designed for a TJ, but there's a couple little bit of mods that can happen where it'll fit back in an LJ. Um, but it is a fully adjustable rack system. And uh, on a TJ, it's pretty awesome because you can actually put it in there. And if you put it at the right level, it also becomes a bit of security for things you might have in your, in there, in the back. When your top's off and it just, it lines up perfectly with, you can line it up perfectly with your, uh, with your tailgate. Um, and so you can have some things strapped on top. You can also use it for security for things you might be putting down below. Um, and uh, makes for a really, really nice, simple, lightweight rack system for the back of the TJ. That's awesome. That's awesome. Unless you're like me and you got to have to have kids back there, so you got to throw them back in, which is kind of a weird thing. I just want to kind of put this out. Like, my kids want to go riding around in the TJ, and I just hit the microphone. Um, if I put a car seat in a TJ back seat with the top off, the kids are sitting higher than the sidewall of the Jeep. Yeah. yeah. It, wow. It, it, it feels kind of weird to do that. Like I, I, I feel like they're up higher. Like they've now, they now have full access to just basically be thrown out the side of the Jeep. If something happens, like even if they're do you remember both that company, there was a company called Wrangler, but it was R A I N G L E R. And they made these, like cargo style nets that went on the side of an LJ. And for uh, some yeah. reason, it, they just came into my mind when you said, yeah, you could put them, that way they could just bounce off the net. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Just do that. Well, I can, I can always give our buddy, uh, you know, Chris a call at Spiderweb Shade and have him make some custom ones for me. Just to, just to block in the kids. Yeah. And with, with the bungee balls, it would be like a sideways trampoline. <laughs> Don't mention that to them. They'll be bouncing off one side to the other side, one side to the other side. I will say, I so so the top has been off the TJ and it, it was off, and I I've been driving it off and on, right, going between the 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 JT and the TJ. The TJ is just more fun. It's like a little sports car. It's, to me, it's like the equivalent of a of a Jeeper's sports car. It's just a fun fun rig to drive. Stick shift, you know, it's a ninety eight, um, but I I had it and I put the spiderweb shade on because the previous one I had ended up getting destroyed for some reason. And so we put a new one on and I got it, you know, it was a big deal. And I've been running around kind of with a baseball cap on and some sunglasses and just kind of doing that prior to putting it on. It really makes a huge, huge difference. And you forget how much of a difference it makes, right? But you put that spiderweb shade on and it's just, I don't have to wear the ball cap. It's, it, it cools down the vehicle. I mean, it's the sun gets dissipated. It really is a great product. Yeah. It, I agree. And it's funny because um, not very long ago, Jesse was really looking at, um, and I'm sure you've seen them, those clear lids that are like, a, a, they're made out of some kind of a plastic. They're a clear acrylic poly or, or acrylic or something. But right. it's, it's a clear piece that goes above your head. And uh, I talked to a guy in New Jersey on the beach he had when he got up on the trailer and I said, Oh, how do you like that? And he said, well, it's really cool to look through, but I'm literally a piece of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Probably need like a like a a two way um, uh, filter on that, like a two way um, uh, a window tint. tint. Yeah, a tint so you can yeah, see out but yeah. not in. Maybe maybe mirrored. There you go. Something. I don't know. Is that is that illegal to put a mirrored surface on the top of your vehicle? That affects some airplane someplace. <laughs> yeah, there's probably something that somebody's not going to like about that. I'm guessing. Yeah, no, that would be that. That's because I do. They make a tinted version. It would make total yeah, sense to make a it tinted. It's like smoke, I think, or something. Yeah, smoke plastic. Yeah, because all that does that just replaces your your um, freedom tops, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a clever idea. They've been around for a while too, I think. A couple of years. But yeah, I, I I much rather have the spiderweb shade on there. And now he has it for the jail. He has it in the two piece system, right? So you can do it yeah. in the front that just just handles the area um, where the uh, where the freedom tops are, or you can do a full complete one that goes all the way back, or you can do a two piece front and back, whatever. I still want one for the gladiator though that goes just covers the bed. Oh yeah, just the bed. That would be yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, just just something that pops on the bed that I can roll up back and I can pop it out when I throw some groceries or something in there. And you know, it, it's like right now, it's cool with the with the tent on there, with the side stuff on there, with the rack. You can throw anything back there. You don't get a lot of wind rustling to pull things out, right? Gotcha. But but if you take the tent off, all of a sudden that opens up, and I can't just throw a bunch of cardboard in the back to take to the office and throw in the dumpster. So right, having stuff to blow out, sure. Right. So Chris, I know you're listening to us because you're a faithful listener of the of the show because you you know you can't get enough Corey, Jesse, and Matson. So if you are listening, just JT man, just the JT back like a little tonneau cover type of thing, small enough to be able to roll up, put it in there. That's all we need. Yeah, I have to maybe bring that up. If we saw some really bizarre trends, and I, I always think it's interesting going to the East Coast um, because we do see things, it, they seem to be a little delayed um, in the East, and I don't know what, what that is really, um, but we still see a lot of TJs, a lot of LJs, and of course, Jesse mentioned the XJs. Um, I, I'm i guessing that what we had on the trailer in, in the last three weeks was probably three to one xjs wow yeah yeah i mean so kind, I'm, kind of different what what era um mostly eastern pennsylvania and new jersey yeah okay but as far as like uh are we talking early xjs we're talking like oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious i'm curious because it's like most of those things are so rusted out from the east like are they are they buying these from california and shipping them back out i mean there were a lot of them. The, the ones that were in the best shape were, of course, like 98, 99, um, like the, the Cherokee Classics, you know, the, that still had the four liter. Mm, um, okay. So, and we even saw some, we saw some YJs, we saw some ZJs, like it was, it was, yeah. a, it was the Cherokee, uh, Cherokee month, I think. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, having closed doors and a closed top and uh, a relatively cheap vehicle with AC running, it's not a bad deal. No, there's definitely something to be said for that. And, you know, out east, those parks tend to be a little bit, uh, they can be a little bit extreme. So to not want to scratch up your $75,000 Jeep, I understand that. So we had some good news pop up last week. Uh, you can guys, it popped up a modern Jeeper. You can check it out. But um, out here in the West Coast, Oceana Dunes, the uh, the judge overruled the what the commission that has this idea that they're totally in charge of our coast, the California Coastal Commission. You would think from its name that that's true, but there are rules and laws that supersede what they can or can't do. So when they decided that they wanted no more OHV activity um, on Oceano Dunes, Pismo Beach area, um, all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, well, no. Groups came out and were smart about it, filed lawsuit, including SEMA, led by SEMA with a lot of other organizations involved um, to fight for the right that the reality is the law spe specifies OHV usage and therefore that cannot be overcome by a governor-appointed commission. 
And so it was determined that, uh, that yes, you can go out there and play with your OHV vehicle on Oceano Dunes. Now, does that mean the fight's over? No, because it could no. be that, that, that the, those that want it will say, well, we have to just go in a different angle or a different way or a different thing. So they're going to try other ways to close it down, which means going back and attacking the law because basically the, government, the, the courts have said, this is the avenue you have to take. But for now, the Coastal Commission has been told they can't do it. That sets a That's precedent. Right. And it also sets a precedent for other things that the Coastal Commission may have tried to do or be trying to do. And so for us, it's a, it's a win out here, and that's that's awesome. And for all of you yeah, that helped in the fight, thank you. Our friends at uh, our friend Greg Cottrell at Rugged Radios was a huge um, supporter and advocate for land use out there, and was a fighter in that Oceana Dunes, um, that whole project. So yeah, it's really cool to see something like that where we actually uh, we we come out ahead for once instead of. You know, so many, so many times, and we've talked about this too in the past, but so many times they'll, they're going to take 20,000 acres from us and we go, no, no, no. And they say, well, okay, we'll just take 15. And we go, yay, we won. We got 5,000 acres. No, that's not yeah. how this works. Nope. Incremental. They play the long game, and it's an incremental loss here, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Next, you know, you, you don't remember you had a toe before. You just take That's a little right. bit off with the nail, a little bit here and a little bit there. You don't remember what it was like. You know, what did, what did Ronald Reagan say when his famous quotes was that, um, you know, uh, what is it? The loss of freedom is only a generation away. Yep. Yes. When you when a little bit goes and a little bit goes and a little bit goes, next thing you know, our kids and my kids um, don't know what it was like, don't know what freedom really is like because they haven't experienced it. I mean, hell, they have no freedom in my house, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, that, you're, that, you're exactly right. I mean, we it's no different than than what they they do to us every day. It's it's gas prices being. Oh, it, they went up a little bit, but they'll come back down. And, and, and you know what? What's interesting is lately they gas prices have come back down a little bit. But when gas prices go up, I, I had an interesting conversation at a truck stop the other day. And uh, the gentleman said, you know, if they, keep, if, they, if they make diesel prices higher, how long do you think before groceries go up? And he was, a, he was an over-the-road driver and, and worked for a large company and he said, you know, these these prices, the companies have to pay more for fuel. And all of those things just roll right down to the consumer. So all of those products that you're wondering why the price of eggs went up or whatever. Well, it's because it costs more money to then transport them and everybody's going to get paid. That's not going to change. I paid, I paid $32 for two and a half gallons of DEF in a box uh, yesterday. Wow. How much? $32. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. When it, at the pump, I mean, when the, when you go to a, where it's, where it's actually available at a, at a truck stop with the, with diesel itself, usually it's about the same price as diesel around four, maybe four fifty a gallon. So two and a half gallons for $32 is a little bit, uh, well, that's just robbery. Yeah. What do they say? Loves is like the biggest producer of, of death in the yeah. country. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Sure, why not? Hmm. Let's go back. Let's see if there were any loves lobbyists in that uh, in that legislative process. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we got to keep you know we got to keep producing lithium so we can still make it batteries and blah. Oh, that's a whole not. Never mind. I'm, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. There's a glut on the market of uh, of electric vehicles. They can't sell yeah. them. It's stuck in the lots. It's like people don't actually want them. And what, what's going to happen when Dodge comes out with their electric muscle cars and nobody buys them? Yeah, that would be interesting. If if people, I, boy, I don't know. I mean, there are sure some folks out there that still have quite a bit of money. Oh, and to, as a side note, I will say that if you're looking for a really really nice Ferrari, four fifty eight. Uh, Kevin Williams of Lightbright fame is actually trying to sell his. Um, it's a gorgeous car. If I had an extra $200,000 laying around, I'd buy it. 
Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Kevin, why did you buy the damn thing in the first place? <laughs> and of course, now everybody's giving him a hard time about, oh, you know, hope you're okay. They are fine. As far as I know, they're, they're doing fine. They just, it's time to, you know, you, it's, it's kind of like everybody, you, you can't drive five rigs in your garage all the time. It's kind of difficult. He does like his modern Jeeper, um, his modern Jeeper uh, social distancing shirt. He wears that all the time. So yes. He's yes. a modern Jeeper fan. We love him. We love all people. That's who we are. That's right. Except we just got, we saw yesterday that the uh, San Juan Mountain uh, group Facebook page posted that uh, Black Bear Pass will not open this year in Uray, Colorado. Wow. Uh, they, they, they blamed because of the snowpack and the avalanches, but you know what, for me, quite honestly, I, I think that it's actually a really good idea to give that trail a break. Um, I can't tell you how many people that we've talked with and it has become their bucket list item of things to do. And, um, you know, I, it, again, our trails are getting overrun and when you have, thousands and thousands and thousands of people on a trail that usually only sees a few hundred in a year it, it doesn't do the trail any good so maybe a trail opening uh not opening this year is okay yeah maybe well you know it's it's I'll, a it's a it's a thing but I'm maybe sure I'll we, get lit up yeah yeah at the same That's time it's like well we, we're we're responsible partly for promoting trails so um maybe you need to stop talking about the damn things Right. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, um, there's now that uh, so many people can work from wherever, uh, there's a lot of freedom, I think, in people's lives, which is absolutely awesome and amazing. Um, yet, at some point, we have to start taking care of our land again and not just abusing it and using it. So, well, the easy solution there is to play the game of, well, okay, now you have to have a permit to go on a trail or you have to pay a certain fee to go on a trail or they limit the number of people going on the trail, which is not unheard of because they have done it. They do that. Listen, we're going to go to Monterey. Um, I think the same weekend that Sierra Trek's happening. That's like the next event after, um, after Jeep Jamboree up here is Sierra Trek on August 10th through the 13th and i think we're going to monterey on the 13th because louisa needs to take her test for his her l1 crossfit um certification um, oh nice and it's like oh good well one of the things we could do is go to the monterey aquarium yeah no between four kiddos and um and two adults i think it's like eight hundred dollars seven or eight hundred dollars for for tickets i mean it's insane what Oh, it's incredibly expensive oh, to, wow. to go to the aquarium. And um, it's just very, very expensive. Now, what have they done? Well, they said, well, you know, if we keep prices cheap, we're just going to have too many people. So we will moderate and modulate our market by raising the prices. So it's not for everybody. Yep. Some people really want to go. That's fine. But if you want to go, you have to pay a higher price. And it's not because they're trying to pull in the money to... to manage all these people and stuff. Listen, they get massive grants, I'm sure, from the government and from other things for this work they do. Because the aquarium isn't just a show place. It's a place where they do a lot of research. They have support. They do stuff. They they do stuff in the Monterey Bay. So there's a lot of money there. Um, and I'm sure it still is an overhead cost involved. But what they're charging has to be more about modulating the number of people that go through the door than it is about just purely profit. Yeah. Well, and I, I understand the, the, the what, what bothers me about that is the folks that maybe aren't so privileged or just don't have those kind of funds. And so now their kids and, and themselves will never get to experience something like that just because they, they don't make, you know, a bunch of external uh, extra money to be able to spend right. on stuff like that. Right. And, and that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's that's why they have these other little aquariums that are popping up as strip malls, which are um, just gross. I'm sorry. I, I, there's 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 one of them over here in Folsom in the Palladio. Um, 
I've gone there a couple of times. Every time I go in, I'm just like, nobody, who's responsible for trying to keep the place clean? Who's responsible for trying to make sure that maintenance is done right? Who's responsible? It just, it feels like, um, I don't know, just feels like these animals are being overfed, disabused in a, in a dirty environment. You're walking along, there's food on the floor. There's, it just, it just, I don't know. Uh, I, I'll talk about that some other time, but you know, that it is, and it's a cheap one. I mean, it is relatively cheap comparatively and kids can go in there and play and they can, they can see, they can touch these little tiny stingrays that will come up and, and bite, you know, feed food out of your hand all day being fed all day right it's um and you can pet little petting zoo areas and stuff that's all fun and games right and it's better than some of the zoos because sacramento used to have a great zoo now it's just kind of a walk around zoo and it doesn't even have it doesn't even have elephants anymore i mean what kind of zoo doesn't have elephants every kid wants so but anyway that's a whole nother story we can go down that path some other time well guys okay so you're going back all for fun, and then is it back home for how long of a break? Yeah, well, my, we're actually home for, I think, about 10 days-ish, and then we're reloading, uh, maintenance everything, washing everything. Uh, we'll be back on the road in, like, t I think about 10 days or so after we get home. We're heading back, back to go back east. Uh, Smoky Mountain will be the... The um, our Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion will be kind of our next big event. And then, of course, we've still got some jobbers to touch base with, some shops to hit. We'll probably touch base with our, our friends in West Virginia. Um, Senator Mark Maynard will be out there and Jerry Bain and those guys. And so we may get to, to go play with them for, for a day or two. I know that there's stuff going on at Windrock out there during Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be putting that tour schedule probably together in the next couple of days after we get home, uh, get caught back up a little bit, kind of regroup and uh, make sure we're, we're hitting folks that, uh, that are, are, are wanting to, to have us come by and say hi. So yeah, you know, and that, that'll probably be another short tour of about a month. Yeah. Hopefully my Jeep will be <laughs> fixed. My graphics will be on it. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. So much to do. Always something. How is your Jeep? Always something. Yeah, we got some additional some additional fixes to Jexy's wrap after the Artemis that, that we've been trying to get done. And so it'll take place hopefully when we get home. Jeep has actually, they think they've found, you know, we talked about her issue with the front locker and the service locker error codes that a lot of JLs are, are having problems with. And then our friends at um, uh, Taser, uh, made the little pigtail that basically fools the sensors in the differential to say, hey, it's okay, computer, the sensors are fine. And literally, there's a sensor in the differential, and it, it lives in oil, and it sits in there and says, yep, the locker is functioning, and this, it'll, it'll tell you whether it's the, the plate has moved over to locked or not locked. Well, apparently, these sensors filled with oil, they go bad. So initially we thought maybe that was the problem. Taser came out with a little pigtail and uh, they actually have worked on a lot of JLs and gladiators. Uh, and mostly this happens on the rear. Well, Jesse's was on the front. We kind of, we, we, we took it all apart at uh, Christian uh, Lunas off road, Christian uh, Peterson's shop in near Memphis. We took it apart put an additional sensor in it that the Jeep dealership gave us. That didn't change it. Took it to our Jeep dealership once we got home. They worked on it for nine days. Nine days and Nothing. on the last day, after the, the sensors they said were, were fine, there is a TSB out there about these sensors, but they said, no, that wasn't the problem. They traced wires all the way back to the uh, there's a control case. module on the transfer case. So we don't know what the fix is yet. The dealer, our dealership says they've, they've, they've found the problem. When she got her Jeep back, it does not say air locker needs service anymore. Uh, oh, but we haven't touched it. We haven't touched it because we've been on the road. So um, hopefully there's something that comes of this and we'll keep everybody 
posted as to what they, they tell us. Yeah, definitely. This is not a good thing, Jeep. Let's try to fix these things faster. Come on, people don't get to use this. This is the prime wheeling time. That's right. Yeah, and this this whole, the, the TSB, basically, uh, the part number for that uh, fix, they send you five a box of five of these sensors, and apparently each sensor has a different resistance, and Jeep literally tells the shops to just keep trying them until the code goes away. Really? Just keep trying them. Now? That's great. That's great. Just keep throwing. Just keep throwing mud on the wall. See what sticks. Well, it's better than throwing axles at the wall. Yeah. I guess. So their, their repair was to replace the entire front axle, which they've done on a number of Jeeps as well. But Man. I don't know. Maybe there was two different issues going on there. But yeah, kind of interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Well, interesting. interesting. That seems to be the life of Corey and Jesse on the road, my friends. Yeah. It, it will, so, so are we going to be able to be on the show again next week? We should be actually home in nice. in our in a real computer, not driving down the highway. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate you taking the time while you're on the on the road to to say hi to our fans because it's been a while. They missed you. And uh, even though you can see them, and if you follow, let's see, what, what do you guys, I don't even know where you're posting now. Like, they follow CTI it's on Tour? C T I Tour, yeah. Okay, CTI Tour on uh, on Instagram. Um, Facebook. And Facebook. And Facebook. And Facebook to see where they are, where they're going, where they're going to stop at next. So if you're in Colorado, get out to All for Fun, say hi to them. But pay attention to where they're going to be showing up at what uh, different shops. Because even if you're just coming by to say hi, they like that. You don't have to be going for a CTI trip. All right. And and I have to say a shout out to three of our awesome people. It's their birthday today, Christian. I have Charles and I have Chris Canary. So yeah. wow. happy birthday, guys. Three of our industry folks, all birthdays today. So dang. Somebody's getting drunk. Me. <laughs> that's awesome shout out to everybody hey all right modern jeepers thank you for joining us it's another great episode and i uh, hope you can catch up and with all of us and what's going on check out previous episodes there is an episode where we just talked to the um the uh one of the coordinators for all for fun back in the day i'm trying i was trying to look it up while we we're going which is why many of you may have seen my head down like this i was trying to look it up um, to see which episode number it was. I don't have that, but we'll try to put that in the show notes. Um, so that, that had to be a while ago. That was, um, gosh, that was Corey Mole, I think, way back when. Yeah. So that would probably have been like year one, wouldn't it? I, I would think so. Yeah. That, that sounds like it would have been uh, way, way, way long time. Way long time. Yeah. Way long time. Way long time. Me long time. All right. <laughs> For all of our modern Jeeper fans, appreciate you. We will see you on the trails. Cheers, guys. See ya.